no matter what sort of camera you're using, you're going to encounter certain problems with the lens. Because of the way that lenses are made, you're gonna have problems with distortion, which is the bending of the image, vignetting, which is the darkening of the corners, or chromatic aberration, which is the color fringing. And this is most prevalent in low-end mobile devices or something like the GoPro, but you'll also notice it on a high-end DSLR with a Zeiss lens. Even though it's a really expensive, fancy prime lens, there are still problems with it. And we can account for that in software. So I wanna show you some tips and tricks for how to get those artifacts caused by the lens out of your image. Okay, so the first image we're gonna look at is a DNG file, a RAW file. So naturally that's gonna open in camera RAW. And all we need to do is come into lens correction and we'll see that there's a little toggle here. And not only will that remove a lot of the distortion and the fallout in the corners, but it'll also show us that this was taken with my Canon with a 17 to 40 lens. And those wide angle lenses really have a lot of distortion. So pretty profound difference there. If I wanna go into camera raw and I don't have a raw file, remember all I need to do is go over to Photoshop, Preferences, File Handling, Camera Raw Preferences, and tell it to open those non-raw files. Now, using CC and later, I can just come into camera raw as a filter. And with this image, I can pop in there, and there's another thing I wanna do, which is in the manual section. I'm gonna hit A, and that's going to apply upright. In addition to lens correction, it's gonna stand the image up and do a quick perspective correction. So that's another thing that I can do there. Now, I do have some of this functionality in Photoshop as well, and the implementation is slightly different. So if I come into the filter menu, and go to lens correction, I'll see this really nice dialogue for solving these same problems. And I can see that I've got my iPhone 5S. We automatically know which camera you're using, which lens, which combination. We have profiles for all of those. In the event that you don't see yours, you could come in here and you could manually override these. So if this were GoPro footage or something off of a Leica or anything else, I can choose manually my camera and my lens. So just for the sake of an example, let's look at this on an iPhone 3G. It's a minor difference, but there is a difference. Now what's great about this is I can apply it to video as well, whether it's your high-end DSLR video, or for the sake of this example, just a low-res video file off of my iPhone. So I can confirm that that's video, and I wanna remove some of the problems with the lens from the video. In order to do that, I just come in here and I convert it to a smart filter. Making it a smart filter or a smart object is going to allow us to process that video. And then with that done, I'll come back into lens correction and you'll notice there's no information down here. Video files wash away that EXIF data. You don't have any information to tell you which camera or lens, so we need to manually override that. So I'm gonna just say that's Apple iPhone 5S and I've applied lens correction to video. Now you might notice that one of the options that I have here in Photoshop is I can search online. So in addition to all of the profiles that we've built, you can search online for profiles that other users have built. And if you like, you can go to labs.adobe.com and pull down a profiling utility to build your own. I think you'll find that there are a lot of them out there and one of the reasons you wanna make sure to do updates is we're constantly updating our support for different cameras and lenses. But in the event that you don't find what you're looking for, or you just wanna go a little bit deeper, you could create your own.